Registered Phenomena Code 276 Object Class Alpha Yellow Hazard Types Auditory Hazard Visual Hazard Containment Protocols RPC-276 is to be stored in Storage Locker U-4 in the Alpha Wing of Site-473. Testing is limited to Personnel Level 2 clearance. RPC-276 is a golden Sockus mask, the ancient Greek symbol for comedy. The edges of the mask are lined with velvet fabric and numerous silver spikes, each measuring 2 cm in length protruding from its backside. When skin contact is made between RPC-276 and a subject diagnosed with schizophrenia, it will override the subject's senses and induce a dream-like state. An RPC-276-affected subject will appear as if they are sleeping. This dream is an amalgamation of the subject's dreams and personal thoughts that form a coherent narrative. If there are additional subjects aware of this event within the vicinity, and they desire to view the narrative taking place, they will be affected in the same manner as the subject. The narrative will begin with the original subject's voice being heard by every viewer, whispering the title of the narrative. The title will materialize before them in unique lettering. The properties of the rest of the vision will depend entirely on the original subject. Individuals appearing in the narrative are commonly non-existent, or are altered versions of existing persons. When the narrative is finished, all viewers, except the subject involved, will regurgitate a papyrus script detailing what was seen in the vision. Research as to how the script is manifested remains inconclusive. Addendum. Below is a collection of logs of narratives created by RPC-276 created by comparing viewer accounts and the script itself. The Layman's Executioners Subject CSD-3853 Viewer CSD-4737 Begin Log CSD-3853's voice is heard whispering, The Layman's Executioners. The same words are shown on screen in wooden lettering, presented in a Times New Roman font. The title is displayed on a smooth stone background. The footage cuts to a restaurant with 17th century architecture. An argument occurs between two men, each dressed in era-appropriate attire, sat across from each other at a table. It embarrasses me to even confront you about this, but why were you in that blasphemous cave? I assure you, that wasn't me. Do not lie to me. I saw you with my own two eyes. Like I've said before, Man 1 flips the table before tackling Man 2, grabbing him by the collar. It wasn't me. It was the priest, you buffoon. The man in the center. He's a closet homosexual and an adulterer. He has abused his wife. What? Unhand me. Man 1 releases Man 2. You didn't know. I understand. You're… not familiar with this town nor the people in it. But you must believe me as your friend. That man is the devil in human flesh. He wore my skin, wore my clothes, and walked into that cave. I should have told you of this before. Please, you must help me. Crucify that man on the wall of his own home. Execute him in front of the townsfolk, not only as atonement for his many sins, but to also give the people of the townsfolk peace of mind. Man 1's face is only solemn. He appears completely unfazed by the gradual change in Man 2's appearance. Alright. I believe you, Thomas. You've never lied to me before. I apologize sincerely. I will help you in any way I can. The scene abruptly cuts to the wall of a house. A crowd of people dancing and laughing in front of it. A man, assumed to be the aforementioned priest, is nailed to the wall by his palms, neck, and ankles. His blood spurts from the wounds, covering the people. Man too can be observed entering a cave in the distance. End log. Quaffinwichi do Birbu. Subject: CSD-3853. Viewer: CSD-4737. Begin log. 
an indiscernible title is whispered. The letters Quafenwichi da Birbu are typed into a computer screen, in a Helvetica Noia font. All dialogue is additionally incoherent. It is of note that CSD-3853 suffers from aphantasia. The narrative is an exact recreation of the day before the test, with CSD-3853 partaking in the normal directives as a CSD class. The only differences in the recreation is that all dialogue remains incomprehensible, and RPC objects are presented as geometric shapes. Notably, Researcher was represented as a large sphere. The narrative ends with CSD-3853 going to sleep. An investigation of Researcher's involvement within the vision is pending. Trapped in an open field. Subject. CSD-73658 Viewer CSD-84828 Forward. The title is Trapped in an Open Field, and is spelled via various needles and cigarettes on a sand-covered floor. The vision begins with two men facing each other in silence, in a vast desert. This vision is in the perspective of one of the men, designated as Man-1. Begin Log it's so quiet here. It's honestly scaring me a bit. Want a cigarette? I'll take one. Man 2 hands him a cigarette. Well, I need a lighter, too. A lighter appears in his left hand. God damn, you're one of them, aren't you? Man 2 is solemn, as if he pities Man 1. Please just light the cigarette. Man 1 lights the cigarette and places it into his mouth. Man 2 melts into the floor, then landscape begins to change colors, into a mix of blue, purple and orange, while the sky is pink and red. Man 1's eyes roll into the back of his head, revealing instead of a brain, a bald man wearing glasses, a black suit, and a bowler hat, sitting in a damaged wooden chair. He's nervously fidgeting and quickly begins to shout and yell. End log. The corpse named Mankind. Subject: CSD-58379. Viewer: CSD-67386. Begin log. The title is shaped from clouds in an empty night sky. Reading: The corpse named Mankind. The narrative begins with a man moving through the mossy ruins of a rainforest in the daylight. He discovers a gray emaciated corpse, draped in a white hematian. I found it. Now I'll open its mouth and take out. The man is cut off, seemingly caught in a trance. His hand slowly moves towards the corpse's chest. The man buries his hand in the corpse's chest cavity and begins to feel for something. His heart. It's gone. He moves his hand downward into the stomach. His stomach is full of viscera, but it's never full. He's still starved. He moves his hand to the right arm. His bones are like burnt wood, half ash. He quickly takes his hand out of the corpse. Wait a second. Those aren't my lines. What is the meaning of this, William? The real name of CSD-58379. Upon hearing no answer, he quickly reaches for the mouth and opens it. Upon seeing no tongue, he's completely baffled. William? William, where's the goddamned woman? After receiving no answer, he is enraged. If you won't help me, then so be it. I'll do it myself. End log. Closing statement. During testing, at the ending of the narrative, CSD-67386 awoke in a cold sweat. Following this, CSD-67386 reportedly began to feel extreme pain within the upper cranium. Instead of regurgitating the script of the narrative, it appears to have manifested within CSD-67386's head. The script, upon full manifestation, rips through CSD-67386's forehead, killing him instantly. CSD-58379 is also recorded to have disappeared following conclusion of the narrative, his only remains being a CSD uniform, fillings, teeth crowns and ink from tattoos. 
and investigation into his whereabouts is ongoing.